Hi everyone. In the second episode concerning LTIFs, I want to discuss of how we could reshape the LTIF regime so that it would become ver a very viable uh, European product. As we saw in the first part of this mini video series, basically the LTIF did not work out because uh, national products basically offered a more viable uh, alternative than the European regime. It was simply not offering anything worthwhile. So what could this product offer with a, re with an, a managed regime that would make it very attractive? Well, I see four different ways of how this could be done. In the first place, the LTIF could basically abolish all very tough requirements for those investors which are solely professional investors. So we would then make a more layered approach as to what type of investor the LTIF would be marketed to. And to have a very attractive regulated product, which is um, sometimes demanded by professional investors because of their status. So for instance, pension funds or insurance companies are interested to invest in alternative investment funds that are regulated for capital requirements purposes or any other domestic legal requirements. But to make it attractive, it would at least need to offer something which is more, um, which is at least equal or offering something more than simply, for instance, the Irish or the Luxembourg regimes. So in order to make it attractive, you would first have a look into the national laws of those domiciles which are considered to be attractive, for instance, Luxembourg. So what you could do is that you could restrict uh, the LTIF for two professional investors and to abolish all types of retail or high net worth uh, individual uh, requirements and to make it a kind of a SIF or a combined SIF and a SICAR, but then as a regulated product on the European level. So this would then mean that you have a diversification uh, requirement of 30% per issuer. Uh, you would have no borrowing restrictions. Uh, there would be furthermore very uh, little uh, restrictions in place as concerning allocable assets or the use of derivatives for investment purposes. You would keep it a very plainly simple product uh, as compared to the Quave or CF SICAR in, uh, in Luxembourg. In the second place, you could also uh, introduce a high net worth individual passport for this type of products. Well, not introduce it, but basically maintain it, but offering a more attractive regime by, for instance, also taking away part of the investment policy constraints and diversification limits and all other type of product limitations for those who are high net worth individuals. And then you would offer a true marketing passport to high net worth individuals, similar as for Avegas or OSAS, but you would not regulate it to the, in the same uh, strict way as that it is currently the case. Um, so then you could, of course, require a bit more uh, product regulation as uh, compared to the true retail investors. And you could also, for these type of investors, decide that certain types of investments as compared to professional investors are not to be considered to be suitable. For instance, uh, debt funds or uh, infrastructure funds. You could limit them to professional investors only. There are all types of ways of, of how this could be done to uh, maintain to be an attractive vehicle. But in any case, strict product governance requirements, suitability assessments, and all other type of restrictions in terms of redemptions would also not be uh, very attractive uh, for fund promoters to maintain the viable regimes for LTIF marketed to uh, high net worth individuals on the basis of a passport. Well, in the third place, you could make a true retail investor uh, regime for LTIF. Uh, of course, this could maintain the same restrictions uh, in place in terms of product requirements as currently is the case. Uh, obviously, uh, this uh, uh, type of uh, investment uh, 
uh, are not by nature very suitable for real retail investors. Currently, there is a restriction in place that says that they may only invest up to 10% of their of their portfolio and with a minimum investment of 10,000 in such vehicles, which would mean that you only can attract those retail investors, which are actually by nature high net worth individuals, because you need to have at least 100,000 euro in, term, in, in assets in order to be eligible as a retail investor to invest in LTIFs. Well, the AMF, the French regulator has suggested to uh, abolish this minimum investment of 10,000 euro, which would in practice mean that then all types of retail investors would be eligible to invest in LTIFs. I think that would be a first move to make this regime more uh, more attractive. But of course, these types of uh, funds still um, still require a lot of capital. So for fund promoters, it might not always make sense uh, to allow uh, retail investors really with low uh, participations in this type of funds. The fourth point, and very important point, is that you could make uh, a specific regime within the LTIF, which would allow for uh, a more attractive type of loan origination um, uh, vehicle, which could grant and originate loans throughout the whole European Union without being restricted to uh, local banking regulations. Of course, um, as these vehicles might be similar to banks, there could be some product rules in place which are already currently in place, but these could be uh, clarified a bit so that, for instance, loan origination vehicles could not be um, offering any redemptions as uh, to um, avoid any runs. Uh, also, there could be an, uh, a restriction to like small and medium enterprises to which these uh, vehicles could uh, originate uh, loans to. And of course, the current borrowing uh, restrictions and leverage restrictions would be very suitable for such an, uh, an, a vehicle to be uh, a true debt fund that could operate on the European level. I mean, it is currently already a very uh, attractive for this type of investments, but just all the other restrictions on the manager and the product and also the distribution level simply rendered this vehicle to be very inefficient as compared to, for instance, Luxembourg and Ireland that have more, uh, more attractive vehicles in place. However, Ireland and Luxembourg uh, are also restricted to the types of countries to which they can originate loans to simply because of local banking regulations and all types of requirements that are on the domestic level, uh, which renders it to be impossible to really establish that platforms that can originate loans uh, to, uh, throughout, uh, to SMEs throughout uh, entire Europe. Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.